if and when I ever leave Cave Creek, I'm going to leave behind um, America. And every place, else, everywhere else I go in, in this country is going to be something less. And um, that's why I wanted to do the movie, and that's why uh, I think it, it was... Uh, why it's important to me and why it's important to so many people that, that I'm talking to for the movie. Um, because everybody's a little bit afraid that it's going away. As excited as I was when I first arrived in Cave Creek is how, I, how excited I am right now about leaving Cave Creek. And, and that was unthinkable. I'm not alone. I mean, I know, uh, you know others are leaving, not everybody. Um, homes are selling in Cave Creek at a rate, uh, I'm pretty sure, that's unprecedented. And the people coming in are going to, you know, they'll have a nice life. They not only won't know the history, a lot of them aren't going to care. I don't think a lot of the people coming into Cave Creek over the last few years are, are curious enough to find out. It's a cool place. It's a prosperous place. It's probably, uh, you know, more rural than they're used to. and awesome you know it's exactly what they're looking for and they probably feel like the luckiest people uh, on earth and to some degree sure for me for the people that that um, that were lucky enough to be here before I got here um, it's just sad and and um, I'm sure depressing for some and and uh, you know, they're, they're dying out, um, and I'm, I'm not going to wait for that. When I decided to uh, do the 16-year-later um, update to the film, there was a subset of people that I, I knew I wanted to get. Bart, he comes off on the surface as, as the, you know, crazy, wacky Bart, but he is part of the real heart and soul of this place. Scotty is such a talented guy. His passion is so deep and his thoughtfulness is so appreciated. Kaylin is so full of intelligence and uh, well-spoken about this place, about his life, about his role in, in, uh, in, in what makes this, uh, has made this place uh, what, it, what it was and, and still is to some degree. Coyote Joe, uh, he comes back you know, he's not here a whole lot. And he was such a mainstay of the place. There are a series of great interviews, uh, I believe, in that original film. For me, Robert Stone is the, is the pinnacle. It was the answer I was looking for when I made the film. How did I fall so instantly and head over heels in love with a place? Nobody said it better than Robert did. I think that you're looking at... Do you have any at a, at a an area, a geographic area that has been refined by adversity, you know, and in turn it, it cleans, it's cleansing, you know, it's like uh, a pain ritual without pain, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's a, uh, an ultimate pacification, and that's what I think it comes down to, it's like, uh, you know, nature and the cosmos kind of conspiring to create this, this little, uh, tumult as it were you know without putting a negative connotation on it you know this little tumult of activity here that has become this place I decided to make a life change at 35 went to California and uh, turned myself around recognizing I have to you know um, operate within the construct and within the guidelines of the society if I'm going to do some of the things I want to do or maintain the relationships I want to maintain you know all of that it, slow learner dude it took me some years to let that sink in <laughs> so uh yeah coming back home from that um i mean i'm still so grateful for this desert you know having been just immersed in city after city after city for over 10 years you know well yeah yeah over 10 years uh coming back out here and having room to breathe and vast open blue skies and quiet nights what a fucking privilege. I wish I had a concept back then that we were gonna lose this, that what they were all so drawn to was gonna become the assimilation and dissolution of a lifestyle, you know? But at the time, it was just, it was awesome. It was a wonder, man. Everybody was so open and communicating. I mean, just 
freely as people. There, I, there were no real illusions, you know? And even the money that came here, uh, well, I mean, we all benefited from it. You know, so it's, it's kind of like, it's like anything. There's balance in all things, man. And I've come to, um, my philosophy has been that there's two essentials. You know, there's chaos as the order of the universe and there's balance in all things. If I could, you know, the two things I would have tattooed on me, chaos is already all over me. I will have yin and yang all over me at some point as well. More than anything, I love Cave Creek. I just feel like it has developed me into the person that I am and I owe it so much. Like there's, I, I, the reason I want to do so much good for this town is because it's done so much good for me and I just want to reciprocate that. It's not that things are that bad. If you look at it right now, things are great. I'm having a good time, everybody's having a good time. But if you really get down to the base of it, like what makes us tick? What makes it happen on a daily level of why do I want to live? and it's going away. Cave Creek is being chinked at with a chisel physically and a hammer. It's not that it's just happening on its own. There are people making decisions in our daily lives, whether that be local or bigger governmental issues. Um, Cave Creek is resilient to this, like we've talked about, because of the culture, because we are rural, we are tough, we are happy people. Those type of people happen to be more resilient to adversity and damaging doesn't happen to us as much, but it is happening. Cave Creek is being whittled down. Even if you started with the biggest tree and you started just whittling it down, you could come out with a toothpick. Now, hopefully that toothpick is really good and it lasts a long time, but if it breaks and then that's all you have left, that's what I feel is happening. Good sense of community, you know? Uh, you don't get that in the suburbs, you don't get it in the, in the, in the city, you know, it's, it's a little too impersonal, a little too fast-paced, you know, a little slower up here. The mountains are majestic, the plants are beautiful, the, the people are wonderful, the art is great. Uh, it's inspiring, it's, it's uh, liberating, you know. Since 2004, I, I, I pretty much seen Cave Creek become a suburb of Phoenix, but or Scottsdale more, more likely. If you could have a template to compare it to, I would say uh, Old Town Scottsdale, North Scottsdale. The, the, in the last 30 years, if you were to observe that, you could compare that to Cave Creek. Uh, a lot of money um, coming from geographically all over the country, uh, back east and you know California for sure, um, bringing those ideals, I guess, uh, to this community which was you know, a small community of bikers and artists and hippies for, for many years, which is now kind of it's, you know, lawyers and CEOs. People who are coming in here now are, a lot of people are, they realize they want to be in the Phoenix market. They've looked at you know, Pinnacle Peak and Desert Mountain, and, and this just offers sort of a, it's a slower pace alternative, I guess, is what it is, is what they're seeing. You know, they, they come down here and hang out, get a cup of coffee. They go up to TJ's Hardware and go in, and he tells you how to, how to fix your hot water heater with tie wire and duct tape. And, you know, the, the people that live here, a lot of artists, a lot of musicians, you know, it's, I guess it's just slower and easier. You know, it still offers that. We worry about it because every time you turn around, there's more people. The town became successful, and we watched it grow. And what would happen is another place would show up, there'd be another music scene, another group of people, and property values were going up. And as property values went up, we became less of a sort of wild west town on the edge of Carefree, and we became more of what Carefree is. Nicer houses, higher incomes, a cigar bar, more Lamborghinis, more Ferraris, more traffic. You know, Bike Week in this town is, now it's insane. I mean, it, it, it looks like what I guess Sturgis looks like. You, you, you'll have 10,000 motorcycles lining the streets, Hells Angels, hanging out with golf wives, you know, selling t-shirts. Listen, people, we don't have any parking anyways. Um, you don't get any service. And um, I'm rude to nine out of two, 10 new people that come in the door because I'm cynical and judgmental and I'm a Cave Creek lunatic. Um, and you're finding out that says it all, but the food is that good. And um, 
Oh, what else do you want to know? Cave Creek does always change. And boy, people don't like change. But oh, one thing I've learned, especially this has been a knock in my head again. Um, boy, you got to change. You can't live in the past. Um, the condo's being built. Uh, they're a little more um, futuristic, modern. Um, they're very expensive, I think. I haven't stepped in one. And I'm going, you know what? There's going to be people continuing to put a big investment in Cave Creek. Instead of driving to my, flo my store to have my taco, they're going to walk. They're going to ride a bike. They're going to walk their dog, and I don't mind that. That's a big, I don't even know what's going on. I saw a wall getting built. I mean, it's a, you know, it's a big, open, bladed piece of ground that's already there. We need to put something unique on there. I don't know what's, do you know what's going on? Really, more condos, okay. Personally, would my selfish interest, would have I rather had a hotel? I love tourists, but it's all right. Pete, they'll eat here, they'll drink here. I guess it's, uh, it's, it's at the heart and soul of, of what's wrong. And, and okay, you know, nobody's ever loved uh, you know, the Cave Creek Town Council or the mayor, whoever that was at the time or whoever they were at the time, but you know, it was, it was shruggable. It was, all right, they're gonna do what they're gonna do, but you know, what are you, you can't fight City Hall. Um, now it's just, and, and, and for several years now, it's just so obvious that nothing, nothing really innovative or, or thoughtfully progressive or, or Cave Creek centric is, is going to happen. They never say no to a developer and uh, there is a project going on right now that we've talked about. The traffic is going to be unbearable. This used to be, it used to be, it has been, it's, you know, for decades and decades, a one-stop sign town. Cave Creek Road, Schoolhouse Road. Yeah, not everyone stops. Most people do, and occasionally there's a wreck, and, 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 and very occasionally somebody gets hurt. A, a pedestrian will get hurt, and there are crosswalks that people don't pay attention to, but that's mostly because the town council won't help make them as visible as they need to be or as, as effective as they need to be. Uh, but that, that uh, cross-section of Cave Creek Road and Schoolhouse Road, it's going to be a traffic light. Cave Creek is based around one four-way intersection at Schoolhouse. Schoolhouse Road and Cave Creek Road. A lot of history in the lot that is on the northwest corner, which is basically where the post office is. Talk about rezoning mishap. The whole thing is supposed to be commercial, now it's like mostly residential. The employees of the Cape Creek and the town council had to have been swayed to allow changes in occupancy for businesses and changes in the rezoning for what the whole place is supposed to be used for and that is crushing. I understand that we need to build up infrastructure to entice people to come to Cave Creek to be viable business-wise, but that cannot be at a direct conflict and degradation of the people living here. People coming out of this new division, heading east to Schoolhouse, it's going to be not happy because I guarantee you that they're gonna to have to put in a four-way stop light. You try to get people to agree on putting a street light in Cave Creek, and that's gonna, wow. I've kind of become slowly aware of it, let's put it that way. You know, it's obviously I come back here and this is still Cave Creek and it's still the main drag and all that. And as I've gotten more and more around, not only here, but the metro area and watching everything that's developed out there on Carefree Highway in both directions, you know, uh, I'm, I mean, of course I'm awestruck by how fast it's happening. It's reminiscent of Southern California, how it's just city into city into city into city, all the land that's been assimilated, you know, just, it's, uh, it's insane. On the infamous bulletin board was, uh, there was a discussion going on over uh, the development of the southwest corner of Cave Creek and Carefree Highway. And some guy's quote was something about bring on the jack and the boxes and variety is the spice of life and cue the superfluous lamentations. And I quote, really, like really, 
you came here to be part of this, you know what I mean? To, to live on this land and enjoy these sunsets in this space. And, and what? And what? You're going to bring your callous ass New York attitude with you and piss all over the desert? So, yeah, there's a side of me that's infuriated by what I see happening. As an artist, I depend on these people for a livelihood, which is, you know, it's my friend, my pool of friends aren't necessarily, they do buy my jewelry, but I sustain myself on, on uh, the higher dollar uh, you know, people here. So, um, so I appreciate it in, in that sense, and, and I, I recognize the hypocrisy of, uh, on, one, on one level, philosophically or, or even emotionally, feeling like, like uh, imposed upon. Uh, at the same time, I need to, to put that away in order to, to sell my wares, which is, which is an, an odd thing for me, because I'm not a salesman, and yet I depend on my sales to, to sustain myself. It's one big gated community, I feel like, at this point, really. We're, we're, with the social media, like you say, it started 2005, six, and seven. Um, you know, at this point, we're we're more connected than ever, and we're further apart than than, than you can imagine. I, I can't put the two together and make sense of it. So, I, I live here. I make my things here. Everything's familiar to me. I love the mountains. I I, I have a, a, a network of people, a small group of friends that, that make it worth it to to be here. Uh, to be honest, and and all the other things are kind of ignored, but it's a presence. Um, uh, feeling of, of not fitting in, you know, feeling like a like a th third class or second or third class citizen. Cave Creek is sort of the Austin of Arizona, and it's because a bunch of people said we're going to make it that, and they spent the time and they spent the money and they spent the advertising and they spent the years it took. Now, Larry at the Buffalo Chip told me before this COVID thing, one night he handed out four thousand alcohol armbands. Four thousand people got an armband in one night. Now, that's four thousand people running through one bar. We didn't have four thousand people coming through the town in a month in the 90s. And we might have had four or five thousand coming through the last time you did a movie here. There's more red light runnings, there's more people speeding through town, there's a lot more just lack of community, so to speak, just because we don't have the community. So it's kind of a watering down situation is the problem. It's not that we don't have the same people living here, it's just that there's more outside influence that don't necessarily have the same caring of the desert. It's more about they want to use the desert instead of growing up in the desert and preserving it. So it's kind of a, a battle with that, mostly. If, I mean, you see it. It's evident what's coming. You look at all the development down here. Corporate America's making its way in and taking its bite. And it's like, it's like all the drag bullshit that's attendant to the crush of city is pushing, you know, is pushing north to be part of it. I don't feel like a creaker. You know, the term, the term was really cool when it was, when it was kind of thrown around for a while, kind of newer and kind of had, you want to, uh, you want to kind of uh, line up with a group, you know, or feel accepted within, and, and, a, and being having a label like that that you could identify with. I felt cool like that because I'm an old school guy, and I get, I get the creaker credit because I've been around and I've seen it all or whatnot. But I feel like uh, that's a, that's maybe ten years gone, easy. Ten years gone now. Every day, it's, it's it seems a sharper divide, and I and I tend to feel extremely marginalized in my own community. Um, I see it blatantly on social media. There, there are these, you know, group sites, social media sites for the community, Cave Creek, Desert Hills, things like that, Carefree, and uh, it's it's hard to really. I dip my toes in sometimes, and 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 it's like piranhas, <laughs> you know. Uh, and I, I I bring back the stump, and I nurse myself, and I and I and that's that's almost daily if I if I allow if I allow it, you know, if I allow myself to go there, and I depend on social media for my business as well, you know. Although I do speak politically on there quite often, I I also pepper in my 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 wares, that you know, my jewelry. I would hope that my kids would want to stay in Cape Creek. I would hope that we can maintain the level of friendliness and openness and ruralness that the kids would want to be here. I've traveled, people travel, I've never found anything like Cave Creek. I've gone to all sorts of places and it's never quite like Cave Creek. So I hope that it would stay like that. 
if Cave Creek doesn't be careful, if Cave Creek keeps getting built up and Carefree Highway becomes the next Bell Road, then maybe my kids don't want to be here. Maybe they go to Dolores, Colorado. A door open for me to come back here. This is where my family is, where my, both of my brothers are. All three of us in the same place at the same time. That's, you know, unheard of. And uh, so I value that greatly. What I know for the time being is I'm happy here. I feel like I fell right back into my groove, that I'm in the right vein of life. You know, I don't wake up every day wondering what the hell next. Um, and I know, of course, that begins in here. All I can do is my part, man. You know, I've, I've come to humble myself. Life has humbled me, let's put it that way. And then I had to learn to refine that aspect of who I am um, and realize that, you know, I ain't, I ain't gonna change anything. You can only, as Gandhi says, be the change you wish to see in the world. So that's what I do. Um, I try to do it uh, without compromising my spine or my integrity. Um, but I'm also careful how I define those things and how I impose them on the world, um, which relates directly back to, unless I'm gonna get into public office, you know, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna let things do what they're gonna do, and I'm gonna do my damnedest to contribute the best way I can from this place in the world. It's like the death rattle, or, or I'm, I'm lamenting, I'm, I'm mourning something. Um, <laughs> it sounds really bleak. I don't mean to come across that way. I am hopeful in, in, in my own personal endeavors, but it doesn't have much to do with talent. I could, I could be in a garage in Alaska with my personal hopes and, and endeavors. It doesn't really matter, you know. But I, don't, I don't feel pride here. I don't, I don't feel like I, I could stand up and, and represent this and say, this is, this is, my, this is my place. See, this is, this, is, this is, oh, oh, God, no. I, I, no association, I, yeah, I used to know those people, you know, that's how I feel. It would be very difficult for me to buy a house here now, but since I grew up here and we know all of the people and we know the real estate game and we know the people who are moving before they list it, then maybe I could get a house here. So I think it's gonna be one of those things in the future where in order to get my children to grow up in the same place that I grew up, we gotta be careful. We gotta really step up the game and preserve the trails and preserve the heritage of Cave Creek because if it doesn't get preserved, then why would you wanna be here? Kalen and his wife, Hillary, and their two kids, Cave Creek is still fine for them. It, I'm sure, you know, for their, for their kids, growing up in Cave Creek is still gonna be a positive experience. And, uh, you know, Kalen's got the bike shop and all the people, all the traffic, all the development, while on the one hand, it's, it's a horrible thing, it's a terrible thing, but they've got to uh, support themselves. So, okay, you know, they're a young couple with young kids, they'll be fine. Scotty, um, as, as deeply as he feels the, the change, and, and as sad as he may be, He's got to make a living. All of the people coming through now are potential customers for him. Uh, Bart, obviously the same thing. Uh, he's got to sell his stuff. He's got to he's got to make breakfast and lunch for people. Joe Dano, Coyote Joe, is already gone three years. Robert Stone, he's got his uh, his posse of of. Uh, of, of cl the close-knit people in his life that, that support him and sustain him, he'll be okay. For me, the, the, the place, the culture, the sense of, of, of um, well-being and, and awe even, uh, not only of, of this incredibly beautiful part of the, the desert, but, but you know, what was the community and, and uh, the culture. For me, it's gone. Can't be angry about it, although I, I can be, I get pretty worked up, uh, but I'm resigned to it now. Um, it, it, it happened fast, but it happened powerfully, and it happened uh, in, in a way that's, that's never going away. It's over for me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. Um, I'm out. The following remarks are by an old friend of mine. Her name was Laura Hottinger. She ran the little Cave Creek Review newspaper. We had two of them in those days. And uh, that was a little weekly newspaper. 
1963, Laura wrote a little history of Cave Creek. She knew the old timers and, and did a very nice job of her little history. Well, the, these last uh, two or three paragraphs are the last paragraphs in her history. And it says it perfectly, exactly what I felt and what I still feel. It says, Cave Creek may someday be a moderately large town, at least double or even triple its present 500 plus residents. If they had not done what they did south of Black Mountain, we still might be that wonderful little community. But of course, the developers got a hold of us. And what are you going to do? But always, no matter how many modern conveniences of living appear on the Cave Creek horizon, and no matter how many buildings are silhouetted against the setting sun, for many of us who have chosen Cave Creek as home, there will be an almost imperceptible echo of wagon wheels in the distance. And, if you look closely, perhaps a pioneer rider from a century ago, almost visible on a distant hill. And there will be a sudden, sudden feeling of kinship with those who first came upon this land, loved it, and lived here. And finally, there will be the feel of Cave Creek, modern, but somehow still a little bit in the territorial days with the beauty of the desert and the peace of the everlasting mountains around our tiny valley, making our way of life in Cave Creek exquisitely unique. And we'll give thanks that this is home, and I have for almost half a century. <laughs>